And then I guess I also code the pins that I want to uh, solder here. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Why am I holding this? Welcome to the Pwn News. First of all, I want to thank subscriber Highrise who has subscribed while I was not streaming. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is Murmus CTF. Murmus CTF, if you didn't know, he has a YouTube channel as well and he has released an excellent video called Road to uh, Road O'Day Fuzzing Competition Episode 1. Uh, he is making a series about a fuzzing competition called Road O'Day. And in this first episode, he shows how he is getting, what this fuzzing competition is about and um, how he approaches it and starts setting everything up. This is uh, very fun to watch. It's very educational. Um, he goes into a lot of detail. It's uh, He has recorded a lot of footage and has stitched it all together into an over an hour long video. Uh, it's very great and I can uh, highly recommend it. Um, I have it on here right on stream. It's called Road to Ode and he is commenting and going over setting uh, everything up. Um, so that's very great. I can highly recommend it. Go check it out. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, the sponsor of the exploit uh, browse exploitation series that I've been doing, SSD. Uh, they are also running the TyphoonCon conference and they have made me aware of a challenge that they posted a while ago, the Typhoon Con Challenge 2019, and it hasn't been solved yet. No one has managed to solve this challenge so far. And uh, so you can still win prizes. So the first prize is $1,000 plus a free ticket to Typhoon Con 2020. The second prize is an $800 uh, and a free ticket to Typhoon Con. And the third prize is just a free ticket to Typhoon Con. So, you know, it would be so great if anybody of you could uh, check out, c could check the challenge out and uh, try to solve it. Uh, that would be that would be really really great. Uh, also to show to show them that uh, this community here uh, has, uh, you know, can do stuff. So uh, I will also uh, include that in my next browser exploitation video, the shout out that this challenge still exists. So here you have a heads up. Uh, before uh, the, the, the thousands of people watching uh, the video coming Sunday. So uh, try it out. I posted a link in the description. It's probably a hard challenge. That's probably why nobody solved it. It's uh, a per I think it's a Windows reversing challenge, but I don't know how far it goes. So it's, it's probably a bit tough. That's why the price is also high and still nobody has solved it. But um, yeah. All right. Next up in the Pwn News is uh, the first, um, I, I just want to remind you again that the Google CTF that happened past weekend, uh, obviously uh, now more and more write-ups are rolling in. Uh, on Monday, we looked at a write-up together. I uploaded that stream, edited uh, on the main Live Overflow channel, but you can also find the full VOD on here on Twitch or on Live Overflow too. But now more and more write-ups are running in, so I encourage you to go to on to CTF time, uh, look up the Google Capture the Flag 2019 qualifier, check out the tasks, and yeah, more and more write-ups are coming in. If you have been stuck on a certain challenge or you're curious how a certain challenge is solved, almost all of them have now write-ups, so uh, go check it out, um, highly encouraged. All right, that was it for Pwn News. Thank you very much. And now let's head into the stream. Okay, how is everybody doing? Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining. It's kind of interesting how, so I'm pushing the hours later and later that I'm streaming because of uh, my sleep schedule. So it's kind of interesting that uh, the later I go, uh, the less people are obviously there, which is really interesting. It seems like uh, a European community has been uh, uh, developed uh, on, on this stream. And so um, only a very few, Europeans that stay up very late or very few Americans are generally checking out the stream. So that's that's kind of interesting. Uh, today was really hot. Well, I have a hose coming right below my desk, 
with cold air from the AC unit in the other room. I didn't, I barely noticed that it was hot today. I basically slept through the whole day in a cold, in a cold bedroom. I didn't care about the temperature at all. It was so funny to see everybody complain and I was just chilling. I was even almost a bit cold. I was like snuggling under my blanket. Let's continue uh, with the build. Um, Oh my gosh, that has been so long ago, I don't even know where we left off. Ben Eater, so let's go to Ben Eater's YouTube channel, I guess. How can you even focus at this time of day? I just got up. Like, I'm awake for like an hour or so at this point. Maybe one and a half hours. I'm uh, on a completely screwed up schedule right now. Uh, Rampart 3. Like, I, I need to wake up right now. Like, I need to drink my, my caffeinated drink right now to wake up. I, I just got up. And I haven't eaten yet, so my breakfast which will be a late dinner, basically. Uh, also, is, I guess, coming soon. I don't know. Inverted sleep schedule. Yeah. Since last week, when I was on the Thug Road podcast, it has been completely screwed up. Ram building last part video, three. Our um, I, I don't think we finished that one, right? Like, if we skip for... I think we watched it. And we missed the... Uh, the this register down there as well. Uh... So I guess let's, I, I guess let's start from the beginning. We need a refresher. I have no clue what I'm doing right now. I don't know where we are at. I love the nighttime. I prefer the nighttime, but, but uh, I don't know. So in the last video, we augmented our 16 byte RAM module with- Sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to add to that. I love working at the night, but I love working in the night when I've been already up during the day. Because the thing is like, uh, during the day, my brain is too hyperactive, too much stuff is going on. And when we reach the evening times, you know, the body is already getting tired, the brain is getting a bit tired, and then it makes it it's much easier for me then to focus on stuff. So you have all this, this busy day already, and then you head into the quiet night time, and you are just like relaxing, and you are then uh, working on your projects that you want to work on. That's the, my favorite time. So getting up at like 10 or 11 p.m., and then basically it's your day and then during the night it's not the same effect it, it's not the same like my brain is in a different state uh it, it it's not the same as if you have stayed up during the day and then you work through the night so it's not as great so i prefer s uh, sleeping in a little bit but then staying up until like 4 a.m or something like this the, the the those last few hours are the most productive then and, and the, the hours i enjoy the most but i need to be already a bit tired to enjoy that if that makes any sense so, like I said, what we want is we want some dip switches here when we're in programming Got mode. Got the dip we'll switch. We'll set the address here. We'll be able to set 15 here to ground. And this one's going uh, to be are these connections tricky here. because I have these LEDs in the way. But let me into the the, the data inputs of our memory. So that yeah. I believe we have we're connected all these lines already. Go into our memory. So we're all of the. Okay, let's quickly check if we did connect all of them, and then we pull them out as well. So. Uh, so these two are clearly here connected, so these can go, yeah, they are connected up there. These, these go up there, so these two are also connected. In here, let's see, oh yeah, they are here. Uh, here they are coming in here, so these two can also go. Uh, this first bit, or the sort of the most significant bit here, to ground when the switch is on. And of course, for that to work, I need to connect. Okay, so we have. Okay, we have started connecting the first. So this this switch here to the first four, and Ben apparently starts with the other four. So I guess we can just like do this also really quickly as well. Uh, basically, the same how we connected these four need to be. Uh, so the the four that we connected from the dip switch to this one. Uh, now we just uh, connect the the other two. So so I guess we can do that really quick. I cough often. Yeah, <coughs> uh, people around me have been worrying for a while too. <laughs> um, it seems to kind of go away in the winter and come in the summer. Summer I think it has to do with like p my pollen allergy and uh, a little bit asthmatic. But I I don't know. I didn't go to the doctor. I do take antihistamines. Like here, the, the good American stuff, but uh, yeah. Oh, I don't even know how to do this anymore. This has been so long.
as some of you who who ha watch the stream know, I I've been like spending way too much money uh, on on stream stuff the past two weeks, and so then at some point I thought, hey wait, I could build a proper studio. Like this setup is cool with the camera that I've right now, but I could use these you know these these trusses uh, that you use to build like studios or uh, um, like these these aluminium beams that you use for stages and then I thought I could build one in here and then I looked it up and I measured everything and I had it all in my cart to order and then I thought do I really need to spend another thousand euros now on this and then and then I stopped then I held back <laughs> uh, any advice on staying focused on tech subjects I have a bad habit of hearing about something cool and dropping everything I'm focused on to learn about it it's a vicious cycle. Oh, I am absolutely the same. Uh, tell me when you figured out a way to deal with it because that is literally like, have you ever wondered why I cover a lot of different topics? Like why I do web, why I do portables, why I do reversing, why I build now this electronics thing. Have you ever wondered about this? The reason for that is because I have exactly that problem. I see something I want to do and I jump on that even though it has like it's not the thing I should be doing right now. Well, let's say uh, it's it's not uh, it it it's not the most efficient, like best way to do. However, I do believe, and it I had a bit more stress about this kind of like earlier in my days because I felt like I need to catch up a lot, uh, and so I worried that uh, that worried a bit more. But I started to realize that mm, sorry we added three more wires right I, I came to realize that actually all of this still helps me I mean it's bad if you neglect uh, work for example so th th I'm pretty good with that I'm pretty good of not neg neg neglecting work or anything that like has to be done but uh, when it comes to my personal project, I keep jumping around and there I came to to realize that it doesn't really matter to be honest. Like, okay, I, I might not go in as deep into a certain topic, but you know, maybe I revisit it like a year later or so. And, and the longer I've been doing this, the more I realize the stuff, it's okay if it takes a couple of years to build some experience in, in something. Uh, I, I, I rather enjoy my life jumping between uh, various topics then then stressing too much about it so is it for you also just like about your personal projects or do you have trouble like with staying focused on kind of like work or university or stuff like that i see some people my age are doing crazy shit which makes it seems like i have to spend my personal time on making content for github or else i fall behind okay wait let me show you something uh like how how i how i look at these things So this is you, okay? So imagine you have here a bar chart with skill and topic. And let's say, as just an example, you have here like web security. It's just, it, it, this applies to anything. Like let's say there's web, web and there's pwn, like, like binary exploitation, right? And your skill is like web, maybe like this, and pwn is like this, okay? And then there's another person that has uh, a little bit of web and more pwn. Skill, topic, uh, okay, right? So what happens now is you, you know your pwn thing and you look at the other person and think, Oh, skilled. I will never be able to catch up to that. And this person, on the other hand, knows how well they know web, and they look at your web skill and think, oh shit, so skilled. Completely disregarding that you have more experience in, a, in one topic the other person doesn't know, and uh, vice versa. 
And this basically applies to anything, like any experience you have, like might be web development, might be, uh, you know, really good at Git. I don't know what you mentioned with that like, GitHub, but maybe you're really good with, with some, uh, some Git uh, stuff. Th this basically applies to anything. And, and this is kind of how, how we view this. What if you don't have any skill? That, that's not true, okay? Let's do this again. Let's say you are like this, okay? Right? This is your skill, like this is the absolute truth down here, zero. But you, you look at everything and you feel like this is the base. Because this is the stuff you know, right? This must be the base. If you know this, everybody can know this, like, you know, like you are not super intelligent. If you know this, this must mean everybody knows this. Um, so this is the base you think. And so then you see other topics that are like, you realize, oh, I really know very little about or on web, okay, I have some base, but other people, uh, they, they have a lot of skill, but you are completely disregarding that you have already built quite a high base for yourself. That's kind of how I see it. Oh, oh my God, come on, tell me the wires. Six wires, that is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's correct, all right. I know that, like, I totally know how you feel. I feel exactly the same way. I, I keep reminding myself, basically, uh, of this all, every time, right? Like, for example, for myself, I, I think this is also true. Uh, like, for, for my YouTube channel, how people perceive me, okay? Here, this is, this, this is how I think, like, my... Uh, how people look at my YouTube channel because I, I cover so many different topics. Okay. Uh, live overflow. Okay. Me. Right. So I have like hardware. I have like web. I have like pwn. Okay. Like I, I the, the, this is just like randomly chosen like uh, skill levels. Okay. And now there are all these experts in fields, right? There are experts in hardware and they have very little skill in, in other stuff. And then there's an expert in Pwnable. All these experts, so the, the hardware expert looks at me and thinks, all right, the, the, the hardware stuff, that was pretty basic, like I'm way more experienced, but Wow, look at all the other stuff he can do, okay? And then the pwnable expert will look at me and think, oh, the pwn stuff, that's pretty basic. But wow, all the other stuff that he can do. While, you know, in combination, I'm like, super, I, I drew these too high. I, I drew these things too high, right? They are just barely higher than, than all of these these things here, right? They are just barely higher but for all these other people, it looks more, but my line, like my, my, my things are pretty, pretty low, right? Like I'm in, I'm in nothing an expert. Like I, I know good basics. I have a good foundation in all of these different topics. I, I think like, I guess what, what you can see on my, my channel, but from the perspective of somebody who is like really, really good in a topic, none of these topics I, I present in an expert way. And so it, I think it creates this illusion that I would be so good because if you are good at something, you look at me and think, okay, well, that's a bit more of a basic topic, but these other topics he's really good at. While in reality, I'm not good at anything and I'm just a little bit more experienced in, in a topic you have no experience in. But but you project that then on onto yourself and you think that, that, that I would be super skilled in these things. And you use this like and, and and in the the topic you are an expert you realize that i'm not an expert but you brush it off as okay well here he's just basic but the other topics there he's good at i feel like this is kind of like happening with my youtube channel where people are thinking that that i would be really good at every at, at most things except the one that they are themselves experts in uh without realizing that that it means i'm no expert in anything does that does that make sense what if a graph goes into the negative? I don't think that that is possible. I wonder what, how an anti-skill would look like. Like, what would it mean to have an anti-skill? Does it mean you are actively destroying somebody else's skill as soon as you talk to them? 
I guess there are some really idiots out there that when you talk to them, you feel like you are getting dumber. May maybe those people have negative skills. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know if all of the Google CTF chants are reversing? Mm, no, they were not. Clearly not. What What do you mean? Like we just talked about uh, a challenge yesterday that was uh, not reversing. The web cha web challenges, for example, are usually not reversing. Anti skill are the people that believe they understand something well but really don't and are trying to talk to you as an expert on that topic. Uh, have you tried the chit challenge? I tried it. We talked about it on stream. Uh, you can check out the recording. I I didn't find the bug, but we looked at the write up and uh, we figured like out the the trick that is used to exploit it. Pretty clever. Anti-skill people will tell you to install Java if you want to do JavaScript web dev. Well, you need a JBoss or like some other kind of like Java web server to be able to do uh, JavaScript web development. Connect the. Uh, oh, there's an ant. To the switch the other way and connect the grounds down here. Oh no, it's not an ant. It's something else. Into these pins up here, rather than trying to run the wires back and forth. Uh, focus. Uh, Come on, uh, go off my finger. LS one fifty seven. Now the B uh, inputs go are off my finger. S157s. So so the A inputs are when we're in here, uh, programming. Sit on my so camera. programming mode. We Come set on. our address here. We set our um, our data value here, and then we can write. Here. It's in bugs. I have to fix it. Mode, then, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, write for sure. Into the memory, it's going to be coming from the bus, and the bus. Okay, that we also need to do. Crap! I paid didn't pay attention because I was uh, debugging this bug. If you use Tomcat server, you would be laughed at no browser will allow an HTTPS connection to the server. Wait, what? That, that doesn't make any sense. What are you saying? Why don't you use Java for websites or web dev? You do realize that a, a lot, a lot, a lot of websites are running on Java. It's enterprise. <laughs> I mean, not that I like it, not that I would say uh, do it. Um, I, I I think it's 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 kind of... Not so great to use Java, but <laughs> it's uh, for a certain enterprise application, it might make sense. And the fact is that a lot of people do that. So if you want to work in that space, it's a good idea actually to know how to write websites in Java because uh, a lot of jobs require that. <laughs> this blue wire is getting really low. Like, see how little there's on there? I got food. Thank you. Look at this burger. Let's change the category to like uh, mukbang shared eating or whatever. Damn, I'm hungry. Okay, I gotta eat this. Okay, so how do we deal with this? Should we watch something? Should we should we do YouTube reactions? Uh, while we, how about we watch another video by Ben Eater? How about we watch these basics of electronics? How a transistor works? Doesn't this seem important for? Does he have that in a playlist? Digital electronics tutorial. How semiconductors work. Let's go. So this here's a picture of a diode. Uh, these are some different transistors, and and so in a in a whole uh, lattice or like a, a crystal of silicon. Um, all of these electrons are going to be tied up in these covalent bonds. So one of the the impurities that's commonly added to silicon is is phosphorus We'd be able to get current to flow right because electrons that come out of the negative terminal of the battery could could enter this this crystal structure and move around um, and you know there's going to be free electrons here that can be uh, pulled out of this crystal structure and attracted to the to the positive terminal of the battery over here you know this is kind of what things look like at that at that pn junction if we if we zoom in cliffhanger okay i didn't realize how fast i would be with eating um Maybe I should have given it a minute to settle. Phoenix Fire Wings. I'm not sure if you are just trolling or arguing in bad faith right now. 
uh, you were writing that it's wrong. They use JavaScript. It's not Java. Just have Java in the name. Websites are mostly made of Node.js. Of course, a lot of websites are made with Node.js, but a lot of websites are also written in Java. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Like I understand these are two different things, but some websites are written in Node.js, some websites are written in Python, some are written in Ruby, some are written in PHP, some are written in C, and some of them are also written in Java. Yeah, the burger looked amazing. It was like self-made. Uh, it was like the the burger bun was like glazed in like uh, this kind of it's it's like uh, it's like vegan mayo. By the way, vegan mayo is better than real mayo. If you ha never had vegan mayo, don't say a thing. I tell you, I'm not vegan, but vegan mayo is just miles better than than real mayo. Anyway, glaze it over with some spices and then put that in the oven and then uh, those will be the buns for the for the burger it's 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 amazing <coughs> okay uh let's continue with uh, our work here uh what are eggs are replaced in vegan mayo it's like made out of uh other oils uh, i don't even know here this one here oh my gosh this one is so amazing mostly uh what is that plant oil I guess. I'm telling you. Give it a try. I need I need the ad label here. <laughs> but yeah, way better than real mayo. I can't stand real mayo anymore. It's so good. Canola oil? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might might obviously depends on the brand. Who knows? Like with any product, of course. Not what Google statistics showed. 87% are made with no jazz. It doesn't matter if most of them are made with no jazz. It's they're still Okay. You don't understand. How do you calculate most? Okay, maybe most websites are made with Node.js, but imagine the like that is not necessarily the best measurement to measure what is the most jobs. You know, Java websites written in Java are massive. Uh, the companies that are running websites in Java, like these enterprise websites, they have like hundreds and thousands of developers. Uh, even if Java sites is just one percent, it's the one percent that is running on banks and insurances, and all these places are all running, or most of the time are running Java. It's it's Java is is a massive in the workplace, and then you have all the startups. All the startups are using like Node.js and Python for sure, of course. But these are then small teams. Like it's it's a good chance if you do web development that you on the back end that you might be writing Java. And I'm not saying that Java is good or anything like this. I'm just saying there's a lot of Java jobs out there. Yeah, Java web development job. All these different places are looking for Java developers for web stuff. Full stack Java developer, yeah. IBM, IBM, everything on I at IBM runs on Java, basically. I mean, people are running websites on .NET, you know. I'm just saying, it's 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 more common in the enterprise world than you might think. I'm not saying that it's good or that you should use it. I'm just saying that it's still a useful skill if you that kind of work if you want to do that kind of work. What constitutes a website? That's actually a good point, Soding. What constitutes a website? I actually worked in Java Enterprise on a huge six million <laughs> lines of code system. It had a web interface, but it was just one of... Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like These massive websites that we are talking about is like, for example, insurance or banks. And yes, they have a web interface, but they have actually like dozens of interfaces and APIs for all the different partners they are working with. And they have this huge beast and monster as a backend behind it. Uh, so is that still web development at this point? You know, probably not. I don't know. It, it's all fluid anyway. You probably write uh, Java in, in those places and, and you never ever do a single HTTP request. Anyway. Okay. Ah, crap. I need, I need that. <clears throat> I've programmed with Java for two years. It's not really used for backend websites, client side stuff. Do you s read your own sentence? You write, it's not really used. Okay, then it's still used sometimes. Okay, like you, <laughs> I mean, I have 
audited Java websites. At this point, I just assume you're trolling. I don't know. Everything runs over HTTP sockets. Yeah, probably all small microservices that are just communicating with each other. <coughs> I mean, we have like kind of switched around stuff here too. That's why I'm so worried about like uh, kind of like screwing this up. So, hmm. Okay, so this is definitely B8. So that's it doesn't go to B9. No, no. Okay, so that should be either pin zero or one, and not and not pin two. <laughs> He connected this to the first, this is connected to the first dip switch pin. Did we kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. We. How can we test this? How could we test this? How can we make sure we get the order right? Did I like switch these accidentally or? So, okay, so here's the problem that we have. When we built this, we, um, I thought I was clever arranging here wires in a certain way which led us to diverge from how Ben Eater is doing it. And so then we had like a bit reversed LEDs here. Uh, and then we kind of fixed that. So we made sure we arranged it correctly. Now these things should connect correctly up here. At least I hope so, but we couldn't really test that. And it could still be that we switched accidentally uh, to, and that Ben Eater has these connected here differently is a little bit worrying me. So how, okay, let's see if we can trace this, if we can make sense of this. So let's go with the first dip switch here, okay? So the, the, this switch is this cable goes into here, input A4. We are now looking for so we are now connecting the B input. So we later have to do the B line coming down here. That would be here. And the output of that is this here. So this is the first pin from whatever side we are coming. So this cable here. And this cable goes. OK, so, so that makes sense. So this is a data import because we are selecting here the values, not the address selector. I titled uh, my notification wrong. This is the value selector. So OK, so this is data three and that is correct. So this, these labels here go from, uh, you don't quite see it on stream. Oh, uh, okay. So this, our pin one here goes to the first LED. So this seems to be correct. So I guess we did it the other way around than Ben either, but it's fine. We just need to pay attention to this. We, as long as we connect the B inputs up here in the correct order, how, so the first pin, this goes over there and we connect it to the correct the one that is also pin the one here, we should be fine, I think. So we can't blindly follow Ben either. We just need to make sure we look at the data sheet properly. So um, Raspberry Pis are cool, but I have somehow no use for them. I don't know what I would do with them. But I kind of want to buy one too, just because. I run Java websites. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> uh, did the blue flat LEDs arrive? Yeah, they arrived. I can show you in a moment. Um, um, they are up here. See? So yeah, uh, I need to kind of adjust a little bit the color of this camera here. This camera sometimes does like very weird thing. To me, this looks like really nice and blue. Uh, let's see, maybe, maybe it's also just let me maybe turn that light off for a moment. Right, okay, so what I wanted to solder really quick was, so we have this huge potentiometer, right, you remember, to select the speed. <coughs> <coughs> and I found these things here. And they are kind of cool, because they are like a wheel. So you can adjust it like this. And I think that's kind of cool. Imagine this to sit like up here in the corner and then you can like just turn that wheel to adjust the speed. I think that's cool. The problem is, uh, let me show you. The problem is that the, the pinhole spacing doesn't match uh, a breadboard as you can see. So what I want to do is I basically want to solder basically like this. And then I also want to solder it in the back there 
uh, to hold it in place. Now the problem I have is if we want to let it like hold like that, we need to I need to figure out what parts are connected how, uh, so that we don't cause an accidental short or uh, it make it not workable uh, like that uh, if we plug it into the breadboard. So basically, what we want to do now is um, and these two are now basically um, one meg. But that's that's fine. My question is with these pins back here because we also want to solder like uh, the, the pins back here because we also want to solder something to this metal plate basically and let that also plug into the board and we want to make sure and we want to understand how that metal plate is related to these points here not to cause like a short if we would, like plug that into the power rail or something. That seems to be completely isolated. There's like nothing. It's not even ground. I, I was worried that it would be the middle pin basically, like the ground pin or whatever. I've also added a ball head to my camera here, to the macro camera, so I can like also change this now. So I can like uh, point it here where I want to solder now. Okay, so how do we do this? Um, good question. I'm I'm not good at soldering, so I'm sorry for every anybody I'm going to offend now. Okay, so how do I do this? Like, what's the what's the correct way to do this? I apply a little bit of to the. Do I apply just a little bit here already? I guess I coat these maybe first. And then I guess I also coat the pins that I wanna uh, solder here. I'm such an idiot. Why am I holding this? Whew, that was close. That could have really hurt. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> did you see what I did? I held this side of the metal like that and then touch the 260 degrees iron on the other side of the metal and obviously this is conducting the heat. <laughs> Such an idiot. You shouldn't become an alcoholic, you just should sometimes have a beer, you know? The, the middle pin is a bit tricky because they are like, that should be fine now, because there is quite a big gap between the two legs. Yeah, yeah, lead based solder only. I, I want I need the lead smell, you know, like Oh <laughs> didn't notice the back side. Oh no, okay wait, I broke that off. So now of course we also want to do on the back side so that we can like let me think about this. Okay, so but oh wait, let let's quickly try it. It should work already, right? Nice solder thing on there to just keep it in place and then we can take it out and solder it. I'm getting a bit paranoid about the fumes. Do I get a headache already with this little bit of thumbnail picture time? YouTube thumbnail. Like winding up a clock? It literally is winding up a clock. That's cool. Uh, yeah, let's continue. Uh, so we want this, and then we want this, and we want this. Ah, this is bothering you. Is this also bothering you? This is like not quite. Uh, anyway, okay, pins. Th so third one. Third one. Third is going from down here to over here. And so this is the B. All right. Didn't we cut this wire off earlier already, or did, was that something else? Uh, anybody of you uh, know <coughs> the streamer Slightly Musical, um, Albert? He has, uh, he just recently, uh, maybe a month ago or maybe less, got um, got like a robot, a, a robotic arm that he can control with, uh, you know, the, the motors you were talking about reminded me of that. And uh, I really want to buy a robot now too. I ab have absolutely no use for it, but having here a robot arm would be cool. What would you have it do, scratch the doggo? Oh, th that dog is so fearful, it would probably just try to bite it or run away and, 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 and cry. That's the thing, like slightly musical Albert, he does like magic tricks, for example. So the one use he did was use that to show 
it to 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 the camera, right? So instead of just showing the uh, the card into the camera himself, he gives it the robot, and then the robot hand then shows it into the camera. And I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> or when somebody's donating three dollars, and they include the word wave. The robot arm will come into into the screen and wave and go out again. That's also kind of cool. And I checked that the I it took me so I went into his chat and I tried to figure out the brand of the the model that he has right, and he wouldn't tell. He wouldn't react to it. I'm sure he has said it somewhere in stream, but I looked a little bit through it. But obviously, it's crazy to trying to find information like this in like hours and hours of stream. So he just ignored my message. So then I spent another like two hours researching robot arms, going through all the different stores I could find and then compare how the joints are connected and uh, what kind of like how the arm looks like. And then I finally, I believe I found the model and the store where what, what he got. And then there are different models and the price range from like $1,500 to like even up to $3,000. Like, I, I'm not sure the model he got, but he might have paid like two thousand dollars for it to wave for donations in chat. I like Albert. He is also somebody who spends, or he's somebody who also likes to spend money to improve stream <laughs> with uh, new ideas that might not necessarily be worth it, but hopefully pay off in some way at some point. Wonder what the break even is on one of those. Yeah, I mean he's a bigger streamer right he pulls often like 500 viewers so he does get a bit more from like subscriptions and and generally he's also part of offline tv so a bit more like sponsoring and other revenue incomes for sure but i'm not i, I don't also don't think that necessarily he get has money to just throw around so i'm sure the donations coming in for it will eventually pay for it but it's it's still like a I, I still think it's like an investment that he really thought about and, and was not fully sure if um, if you should do it or not. It's so much fun to spend money trying to improve uh, like with ideas for a stream. I'm just waiting for my break even with all the money I spent on like uh, YouTube uh, and, and, and the stream as well. It's It's still just very much a hobby. Even with money coming in, it's like... So, uh, yeah. By the way, Ben Eater in his part list said, uh, you need like to buy one package of these rolls uh, to do the build. But this doesn't work if you wanna be, stay uh, like color consistent. Like the green one is almost empty and so is the blue one. It's getting pretty low. SMD again, yeah. We really have problems with SMD and uh, stripper in here. Like it's difficult to wrap your head around like the whole thing, like considering everything that's going on. But I guess it teaches very well to divide and conquer. Uh, make sure you understand each single component and then look at how each component interacts with the one the other component needs to. And, and then you go slowly, step by step, and it's, it's all fine. I used to be interested in stuff like this, but ended up going into computer science instead. I'm also in computer science. Like I'm a complete amateur here. I, I do this project because I'm also interested in the stuff. I, I, I come from a software background, but I still find it fascinating and interesting. So I'm, I'm doing this, I'm following along the series by Ben Eder of building this because I'm interested because I kind of want to better understand how uh, a basic computer works like really down to its, its, its like electronics level. And so uh, that's why I think it's a cool project. What the heck are you making? Looks like what I had to do in intro to microprocessor class. Yeah, probably it's exactly uh, kind of the kind of stuff you had to do. What will it be able to do when it's finished? It's a computer, it executes stuff. You give it instructions and it executes it. I mean, we don't. We the the main purpose for building this is educational and entertaining. You know, it's it's like building Legos. Yeah. In the end, it also I think it looks nice. Like the reason why I also put so much effort in making the wires nice is because I, I kind of want to hang it on the wall or put it like in a frame or something like that. It should be able to compute all the computable problems. 
the problem is that we have uh, we are we have memory constraints, very hard memory constraints. So uh, the problems you can solve with sixteen bytes of RAM is quite limited. What kind of prior knowledge should I have if you want to try something like this? Uh, to be honest with you, you don't need much. Like you can just basically watch Ben Edo series. However, it costs quite a bit of money to get not only the parts for this build, but also other equipment like an, a multimeter and power supply, maybe maybe even a small kind of oscilloscope. So so to make this a good experience, you might spend more. So so I, I would recommend you to just like buy kind of an Arduino, maybe like these Arduino starter kits. There are a lot of educational Arduino starter kits with just some kind of task and things that you can build, like an Arduino with a breadboard, a couple of LEDs and buttons. They, they often come in sets and then you can build a little bit and then you can see if this is fun to you. Based on th those teachings, if you're just with an Arduino starter kit and building a little bit of stuff and, and, and playing around with that, I believe that after that you had, would have no problem of building this computer by following uh, the series. And so I would generally recommend to buy such a kit first uh, before you head into this because this gets quite expensive. You have an Arduino but no other supplies. Yeah. Anyway, I will be right back. I just go briefly AFK, uh, fill up my drink, go to the bathroom, uh, be back in just a few minutes. Uh, so uh, see you in a moment. Get that underneath there, so power and... Okay, so we connected power here. Of course, ground. So the A input is, is the input that we'll be using when we're in program mode. And then when we're in run mode, um, this is going to be a little bit different. In run mode, we want to uh, essentially take the signal from yeah, if you are all living in Berlin, we should like go to one of these uh, security meetups at some point. I make sure the next time um, they, they try to do the security meetups again in Berlin, like there was like one. I I'm, I hope I didn't miss the, the second one, but maybe it should be soon, I guess. Maybe next month or so, I don't know. I want to go there too. I will tweet about it when, when, um, when, when the next one is happening. Yeah, then we can hang out have you done any live overflow no I, I i will never do a live overflow meetup oh my gosh that sounds the worst idea ever like i don't even celebrate my own birthday why would you think i would make a meetup that has like my name on it holy shit never <laughs> never gonna happen so i think we can go ahead and test this out and Ooh, see testing see what happens so if we power it up uh oh okay wait Thermal camera time. Wait, what is this? Oh, that's the camera body that is so yellow. Mm. Mm. I bought these plates, you know, these camera building gear, you know, for whatever, what else do I spend money on? And so I think we could use that to like extend. Okay, so this is a bit scuffed. I need, I need, uh, I need to find some other stuff, but this is good for now. Like now we have it in the view. Oh, that's perfect. It's almost like next to each other. Oh, that, that looks cool. I need to improve a little bit on that setup, but in general, I think this is awesome. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Let's see if anything blows up. If something blows up, we will have it on camera. Power. I, I mentioned it every time we use the thermal camera. Look at the temperature scale on the right side uh, of the screen. It's currently showing temperatures from 30 degrees to 34 degrees. So these very, very bright chips there, like these here, for example, um, are just, uh, um, are just four degrees hotter than like the coldest thing here. So they are not like hot. However, I find it a little bit concerning or odd. Oh, no, no, this is right. So this chip is getting so hot because it has to drive these LEDs here. Why is it blinking though? It shouldn't be blinking. Why are these LEDs blinking? I just noticed. Holy, sh this is wrong. It shouldn't be blinking. Oh my gosh, these are also kind of blinking. 
Okay, something is very wrong, I think. Yeah, so this would be writing by hand now, I, I believe. Oh no, like... We would write like this by hand. Okay, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Let's see if Ben Eater's thing does the same thing. For anybody who joined later, see what we did here? This is our uh, clock uh, speed selector now. We have like a wheel that we can turn. It's really cool. Oh, God damn it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, I didn't mean to turn that off. I meant to turn this off. Uh, so we can Sup see. Supply voltage is 5.0 right now. And we see, of course, we have some random random data here. If we go into write mode, Okay, yeah, okay, his is not blinking. His is not blinking. <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, wait, wait. The output enable here is not properly connected with ours. Uh, let me see. So this output enable here, see, it's not connected. This has to be actually connected to this chip. The output enable was a second pin here. Oh, well, we have no space. Uh, we can set our address. So if we set the address to zero. Did he disable the clock or is the clock still running for him? Uh, so we can see our, our clock is running there. And we see, of course, we have some random. Only beeps when I press it. OK, so this is already good. It's an input. B4 is the other input. And Y4 is the output going up there. So is that nothing, is nothing connected down there? Wait, when this is, where are these connections again? They go in here. There's nothing connected. So by default, they are all high. So by default, all the addresses are high. So that should also be fine. And then the idea would be that when we are in this mode, we can select the value here and write that into that memory. Nothing changes. Okay, so this is a problem. So the 157 chip. No, it's correct. NAND means, OK, wait. We can verify NAND would mean if we press, here it's 4.2 volt, which is a little bit like a drop. But now the output is even lower than that. I think we have to abandon this project now. The input to this multiplexer here is high. OK, so pulling down to 0 works here. But on the out, OK, so this, this circuit down here doesn't seem to work because this should be pulling it low when I press it. We have A and 5 as input, and we select with that one down here. Oh, we don't have the select thing. Where is this connected? Maybe is that the issue? He doesn't have a select there. Random data here. If we go into write mode, uh, we can set our address. So if we set the address to 0, uh, this should write whatever value we have on our dip switches here. So we have all zeros, so we hit that. Nothing happens. Oh, he has the same issue. He has the same issue. Oh, crap, you didn't see it. It's exactly the same issue with the writing issue. Whatever value we have on our dip switches here. So we have all zeros, so we hit that. Ben, I can Nothing relate. Happens. I can so relate. Hmm. Nothing happens. Oh, of course. So we don't. We're not actually selecting here. Um, I neglected to to connect the actual select pins. That's the same conclusion I came to. These seventy-four loss one fifty-sevens. Uh, he connects the red LED there. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Staubfinger is also EU. What what the heck are you doing awake? Okay, okay. Wait. Let's rephrase this. There are no US viewers in here because that's why we have low views. But we have low views because only crazy people from the EU are awake right now. Oh, wait, yeah, we need to replicate that to the other chips as well. And so that should tie all, all of our sol This is also the 1573, so we need to bring that over to that chip and that chip as well. Uh, OK, now we should be fine. <laughs> it worked. You can barely see here these LEDs, I guess. So we can select like the top LED, for example, here. And then we write that into that memory cell. Now it turns on. Now we can switch the memory cell to something else and switch back. And there should be the same value in there. So let's write. OK, so, uh-oh. Oh, 
Okay, something is wrong with that memory cell. That that seems like a cable is not connected correctly. Oh, there's another faulty one. Okay, theoretically it works except those two faulty memory lanes. It's kind of interesting that they are inverted. One is always low, the other one is always high. It's kind of interesting. I guess the dip switch is broken. Because the run next, right next to it... Ah, no, it's not broken. Wait. Oh, I connected the wrong... Do you see that? Uh, here. 8 and 7 are these ground connections and hefty connections on this side. Then the next connections are here on this side, 6 and 5. And so this shouldn't be connected. They are. They have to go one over. Okay, cool. So cool, we just uh, uh, debugged an issue we had. Uh, basically, this is the RAM module and we can now write values into RAM. So we can select address 0. Oh, let's, let's do address, yeah. In address 0, we write a 1. Oops, okay, this, uh, this needs to be secured. Two, we write a three. In address three, we write a four. Address one has a two. Address two has a three. And address three has a four. Awesome. Selects for all four of the 74LS157, so three down here and the one up here. I'll go ahead and pause here, and in the next video, we'll power it up and test things out a little bit more thoroughly. Cool. I think that uh, can conclude it for today, actually. Uh, so far, with the testing, as far as we got, uh, seems to work very well. So I'm quite happy about that. Maybe something like, doesn't this look cool? This could almost be like a stock photo this could be like a stock photo nerd background for your website or something like that. Doesn't this look cool? Maybe let's turn it on again and and select some kind of like address here. Something like that. These LEDs there. <laughs> it's a Minecraft computer IRL. It is. It is. It absolutely is. It's exactly these components you would build in a Minecraft computer. This looks really cool. Damn, I could look at this, looks so professional. Damn. Okay, do we get another cool shot? Maybe with the red LEDs there? Maybe something like, something like that maybe? Nice, 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 nice. Maybe we can get a little bit of a wider shot. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't look as cool from this view, I think. Yeah, that RAM module looks really cool, I think, now. Anyway, pretty cool, pretty cool. Wow, four and a half hour stream. Damn, I went, again, way too long. Okay, anyway, thanks so much uh, for <coughs> hanging out with me again. I think we made some really good progress today. We, um, we built the little wheel that... Um, to adjust the speed of the clock. And we finished basically the RAM module, including a little bit of troubleshooting uh, with the issues we had. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy about that. This is taking really shape. This looks starts to look really, really nice, I think. Tomorrow I will probably not stream. I need a day to adjust my sleep schedule. Um, and uh, so be because, yeah. So tomorrow will be like that bridge day and so I will probably stream the day after tomorrow uh, again more more on like um, more EU times again I guess uh, a bit earlier in the EU time stays but like I said uh, we'll skip basically tomorrow uh, yeah okay thanks so much for hanging out with me see you the day after tomorrow uh, and uh, have a have a great evening a great day check out awesome games done quick and I will now check uh, who we can host bye bye